Hey there, guys. It's Mitchell, and welcome back to the series where we go through common mistakes, problematic areas in pugs. This is probably one of the best examples out there. This is going to be the under rot, especially on tyrannical with the skip involved. All right, so the, the video might be branded towards the skip. The skip itself is actually trivial. What we're going to talk about is ways that you might fail after or around the skip that will completely destroy the run. So we're going to get right into it. All right, we're going to start by showing you a little trick here if you guys aren't aware of this uh, basically you're able to pull mobs before the dungeon starts now this was possible uh, in 8.0 the whole time i don't know if it's going to happen in 8.1 i haven't tested it but just in case it still works you can do it uh, typically i'm not one for uh, exploits but realistically this is kind of just it doesn't really change anything but the one thing that it does do is if you pull these mobs before the timer ends uh, they will not have infested or perhaps any other uh, fix that they might have in the future. I don't know how it might work in 8.1's uh, Season 2. But regardless, you can do that by killing them before the dungeon begins and then uh, pulling, putting D&D &D down before the timer is over. Just be aware, in this uh, clip here, I actually did it a little too late. People had already started the timer. Um, but anyway, that mob can be pretty dangerous. Ideally, you would get both of these mobs. Uh, I was not prepared for it. This is actually a really old clip. Uh, this clip is quite a few weeks old now. and um, But I'm going to show you. It's a very important clip, okay? Uh, so this obviously here is infested. Whatever. One of these two mobs is going to be infested. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just make sure uh, you're mitigating their abilities. We'll talk about it later. Uh, but that um, the Blood Matron is going to charge to a person, and it's going to do like this frontal slash. You can prevent this with Death Grip. You don't really need to, but you can. Obviously, they can just move out of it. If anybody gets hit with it, it's their fault, but uh, it does. It's a DPS increase, obviously, to just grip it back to you, so you probably should do that anyway. Now, a lot of people would skip this pack, the pack that we're doing right now, but I like pulling it just so count is a little even. We're not going to show the full dungeon, but just be aware, you do need uh, to think about count. Usually, you would try to get count uh, after the second boss a bit more uh, on the way to the final boss, etc. Or, yeah, before the third and after the third, you would try to get a little bit more count. So ideally, you shroud here again. So here's here's a common problem. All right, here's a common problem here. Everybody wants to do things a little differently. And what happens here is the rogue thinks we're going right. And, and it doesn't matter, okay? The, the, the left side has less mobs. So I do think you should probably go to the side with the less mobs. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can still shroud them all. You just might need a little help, okay? If you went right, you're going to need two saps instead of one or whatever, like whatever it is that they do here to make it so you run by the mob. If it's sap, uh, whatever, distract, whatever. You're just going to need to make sure that the mobs don't see you when you run directly over them. Shroud is not invisibility. You cannot run directly over a mob. It will see you, okay? So that's going to happen here. But as you see, we're literally just sitting here waiting to shroud. Uh, this is not what you want. You know what I mean? You want to kill that pack. We had Grievous, so clear Grievous, and then let's get let's get going. Uh, so let's go ahead and show what happens. So the, the guy's uh, struggling. There we go. He finally shrouds. Now watch. you got to sap that right one so he does that. And then you don't have to do anything else here, luckily. But uh, if you, you know, if you're too close to mobs, you gotta, you gotta prevent them from seeing you in some way. And I guess Sav, I don't play a rogue. This is not a rogue guide. But I'm just telling you, be aware. As a Death Knight, a tank, as any tank, people might run over these mobs. It happens all the time. Breaks the shroud, and that's pretty much the key. The, 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 the moral of the story in this video here is if any of the mistakes that we're gonna talk about in this video happen, and they cause deaths. You might as well leave the like it. It's probably gonna result in leaving. So let's let's talk about the first boss, okay? Boss is extremely difficult. I always open as you see with a uh, interrupt, okay? Um, this is a boss. If you're not familiar with this boss on Tyrannical, that does an incredible amount of damage with her cast. And she's going to create copies of herself that are gonna do the same damage with their casts. So you really really cannot afford to have multiple casts going off back to back. You will die. And this is on 12. Later, we're going to show 15. And I'm going to show you how it goes. 12 is absolutely, even on 12, it's absolutely punishing as a death knight. Luckily, we have a lot of ways to mitigate it. We're going to talk about bone storm. We're going to talk about AMS. We're going to talk about death grip. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we're fighting the boss now. Okay. Um, we did not lust on the poll. Step one, 5% in, we bloodlust. Not good. You do not want this. You want your lust to be the first global, always. This boss is too important to maximize DPS. If you watch 
like top players do this dungeon, they have their healer start as a damage dealer. They have four damage dealers. They don't bring a healer. They go to the boss with no healer because there's no way to survive the damage. If they don't interrupt every single one and don't meet the DPS check, they cannot complete the key. So it's mandatory. And that's why you'll see under route runs with no healer because whatever you start the dungeon as is what you get logged as. Another problem with, you know, the whole system there. But regardless, um, okay, so here we go. That, so the road gets that one. So we're going to look at every single cast and every single interrupt, gotten or not gotten, okay? You're going to notice something, hopefully. You'll notice it. If you look at the weak ore, there's one through, okay? Look how much damage that did. Let's take another look at that. That does, uh, let's see. Oh, wow. I went from 100 to 59. So what's that? About 41% of my health, right? An absolutely uh, absurd number. And this is only on 12, okay? That was with no uh, no vamp blood, no nothing. No mitigation whatsoever. Creeping rot. It's going to come out from the boss. People will die to it. See this green stuff here? People need to move from this, myself included. I get hit by it. You will die if you get hit by this on Tyrannical. It does a lot of damage and it's free. It should never hit you, okay? People die to it all the time. You're going to see that in this clip. Okay, so I, I believe it's time-based, but Blood Mirror, it's not the old Death Knight ability, sadly. Blood Mirror is a new uh, boss ability that is going to create a second boss. Could you imagine if Blood Mirror created a second Death Knight? Oh my god, that'd be so nice. It's going to create a second boss. It's going to come up and do the exact same thing as the main boss. You're going to have to dodge uh, multiple green pulls, whatever, all that. So there we go. Another cast gets through. No interrupts. Still, you see, you just watch this. Watch this interrupt tracker. I'm telling you, watch. You're going to notice some weird things as they go on. Now, a lot of people are going to say kill the effigies, and you're going to have to on any real tyrannical key because the boss's health pool is so high. You're never going to be able to interrupt both of them at the same time. You're never going to be able to survive two casts at the same time. That is what will wipe you two casts. So another, uh, that actually hit the the healer that time, looks like. That blood bowl hit the healer. I guess, I guess I'm not exactly sure if there's a threat, how it exactly works, but I have seen myself not get hit by some of these, so I don't know exactly. So creeping rot, blood bolt, I get hit 55%, so about 40 plus percent of my health. Yet again, no interrupt there. Creeping rot on one, now blood bolts on the other. They're alternating, so creeping rot goes this way, creeping rot goes this way. While they're both doing it, another cast goes through. Look at that, hits me for another 40%. Creeping Rot, got to dodge that. Sanguine Feast, that's another dodgeable mechanic. It does an AoE around the mob. You do not want to get hit by that. Obviously, people probably will if they're not paying attention, so be aware of that. Uh, again, these mobs are fully... not uh, Any knockbacks, any death grips. I don't think stuns, uh, fears, anything like that would work. Pretty sure that's not possible. But as you see, if that cast goes through and kills and hits me, I die. So let's watch what happens. Gets interrupted by me. Good work, me. Very good. Mob is uh, almost dead. Excellent. So that was about three casts that were uh, were done in the course of that boss. Another cast just got off there. Two people with interrupt up. Creeping rot. Blood. Okay, Rogue gets that one. Another. Oh, yeah, there we go. So we missed something. Let's take a look. The freaking sub uh, kind of blocks the screen, but watch. Creeping Rot is, is gone out, okay? You can see the Mage ability coming from this here. Look at the Creeping Rot going directly out of Mage. Okay, watch what happens. Mage dies. Dies to Creeping Rot. Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. You should never be taking damage from that ability. That's just brain dead. 27%. We got the uh, Sanguine Feast. Blood Mirror is coming up. Blood Mirror, as you see it, DBM Timer is coming up. This is the dangerous part here, okay? Now she's going to create. she's going to create one more copy of herself every time. She does this mechanic. Guess what? Now, there's going to be two. And if you don't kill it quick enough, there's going to be a third one. You that, that is a wipe. If a third one comes out, you you die. All right? You cannot interrupt all of them. But this is how we had, as you see, interrupt mage. So, uh, a spoiler alert. The mage did no interrupts in the entire fight. Zero. Watch this. So, blood mirror. Here we go. Now, this is how I've been dealing with it. This is actually a great spawn. The boss is on top of one of them, and the other one's over there. I grip this one here. All three mobs are together. We kill the two, cleave off it hard onto the boss. As long as you can keep them together, that's really good. But be aware, okay? 
the mobs uh, are fully grippable, but the boss will jump. All right. She jumps at random times based on the mechanics she's doing, sanguine feast, blah, blah, blah. So you might want to try to save. If you're really trying to maximize DPS, you want to try to gore fiends them both together on top of the boss. But you might do that too early, right before she jumps, and then you wasted it. But regardless, you got to get both of them together. That's the only way you're going to do it. You could benefit from things like solar beam to get both interrupts, stuff like that. But you just got to get them cleaved down as hard as possible. You're not going to be able to interrupt three blood bolts. Some will go through here. So what do we do? I like to say Bone Storm and Anti-Magic Shell and Icebound Fortitude for this part if I can. Uh, the boss is low since it's only a 12. We're in good shape. The damage is not great. Realistically, these numbers are sad, really sad. I mean, with Bloodlust, 11K is really not cutting it for this type of key, but it's only a 12, so it doesn't really matter, okay? So let's see how I approach it. So there we go. Oh, they're actually, I'm an idiot. That's not, yeah, I was wrong. Okay, sorry, I was wrong. They were both right next. I knew they were right next to something, but it was not the boss. So they're both right next to each other, meaning I cannot gore fiends them onto the boss. This is why this is significant. Cannot gore fiends them onto the boss. They're too far away. They're both right next to each other over here. So now I just stack them up a little bit closer. Let's see how it transpires. Double Blood Bolt, I get one, another one goes through, okay? She just cast her Sanguine Feast, so that was good. A little reprieve there. Uh, we did not have to worry about it there. Another Blood Bolt is gone off. Uh, did not kill me, did not do very much damage. Oh, that's because I had AMS, so I had used AMS for that. I don't have the weak ore. I was looking for the weak ore, but this is so old, I don't have it. Um, so yeah, you could interrupt them with Grip as, as well. You really should do that. Should have everybody's interrupt used, and then you don't have one. You don't have AMS. You don't have Icebound. You don't have uh, you know Bone Storm. You get them all together with Bone Storm. That should heal. As long as you don't die, you should quickly heal up. But you could interrupt with Death Grip, as I do here. You should be doing that. Okay. Um, the looks like Ring of Peace was used to some efficacy as well. Uh, and the Mage finally gets an interrupt after an entire fight, dying. As you see, I just got hit by two, and uh, I'm on Death's door here, but. Uh, luckily, double creeping rot hits the rogue, but no big deal. Another blood bowl hits me. Another blood bowl about to get off. I interrupt on boss. Second one hits me from one of the targets. At this point, we are just burning the boss. We're not even attacking the adds. And as you see, the mage is uh, hit by yet another mechanic, and he's ice blocked over there. And the rogue is getting killed as well. So that is that, okay? That is the uh, hardest boss in... If Honestly, I think it's one of the hardest bosses in the five, man. Let's just keep letting this play. I think it's one of the hardest bosses in the game. Uh, this dungeon is very difficult on Tyrannical, okay? Um, and uh, we basically don't have any wiggle room here. If if we die or wipe there, it's over. And I'm going to show you why, okay? you First of all, it, it should be obvious why. <laughs> Hopefully everybody understands. We just shrouded past mobs that you are not going to pull. Now... I think you should pull them. I really do. Uh, I, I am a fervent believer in little risk, little reward. You know what I mean? Like, don't make things any harder than you have to. There's no reason for it. You don't need to do that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's it's hard to dispute that shrouding out of the gate is a, is a bad idea because, or is a good idea because those mobs are dangerous. They, they're pesky. They have a lot of health and they do a lot of mechanics. Uh, and you don't need to pull them. You know what I mean? If you pull them, you're going to have to skip something later. Which, if you ask me, is a better option. I would rather skip at the end of a dungeon. I would rather skip, you know, even if we have to invis pot, I would rather do it at the very end. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, just showing you all this because you have to kill these mobs. Uh, these are even on fortified, dangerous mobs, okay? The living rot is easily the easiest mechanic. That wave of decay cast does basically nothing. Defeated Maggot, that's a tough one. Uh, this one is actually really, yeah, I don't know, man. This one is actually really uh, dangerous, okay? And it's because it does this breath, this like frontal breath that if people stand in, they will die, okay? The reason we're talking about this trash is because if anybody dies here and you don't have a res for them, it's over. You're going to have to, Rogue is going to either have to go back, they're going to have to death run somehow. But they, they, there's no res, you know what I mean? So here's a comp that you, you possibly could see this in. We have only a healer that can res. I can battle res, but I, it's on cooldown and I need runic power to get it. So this is very difficult to pull off, you know what I mean? If somebody dies here or even, you know, dies and then releases, this is really bad. This is, again, a very high risk uh, for, for what I consider to be very little reward. It's just, so there it is right there, that rotten bile. If somebody gets hit by that, they're going to die. And if they die and we can't res them, then 
this is really bad. I'm, I'm telling you, this is really bad. Uh, again, like you're going to see a lot of people do this skip, but just be aware. You got to try to interrupt that rotten bile. You could stun it. You could death grip it. People could move from it, but it's not. Just don't let it. Look at that. See, I almost killed that mage. Just don't let it happen if you can prevent it. It's too dangerous. The living rod is a bait mob. Don't worry about it. Let that cast go through all day unless you're the only one uh, that's, you know, it's the only one mob and the plenty of interrupts. Go for it. As you see, the mage does die. Luckily, we have uh, the, the the healer to to res him because otherwise, he, well, that's it. You know what I mean? We're not. We're done. The flower, this disease lasher, is probably actually the most dangerous mob in here. That decaying mo mind ability, it puts a. I'm pretty sure it's a disease. It puts a disease on a target that uh, prevents them. I think it actually stuns them as well. All I know is it can be dispelled if you're the appropriate healer. I think it's Paladin. Uh, I'm not sure who can do diseases. Maybe, uh, I think Priest as well. Maybe Monk too. I'm not sure. But regardless, uh, it needs to either be healed off or dispelled. Or they can bubble or ice block, something like that. But yeah. And then that uh, f uh, Feral Blood Swarmer. That is another incredibly dangerous mob. It's going to melee. It's going to charge on a person. You cannot get threat on it, okay? Uh, it's it's not tankable. It will fixate. It's going to charge. I don't know. Like, there's a lot to think about, okay, with some of the trash here. So you really want to try to prevent it from casting um, all of these mobs. Just try to prevent them as much as you can as a Death Knight. Death Grips, stuns, slows. Any of these things are going to help a lot, okay? Now, here is ultimately where this run especially breaks up. And I'm going to show you why it breaks up. Uh, spoiler alert, because this mage uh, really is the answer. Okay, so um, the trick here is what you want to do is you want to position him against one of the solid objects on a wall. I like the bones. It doesn't really matter. But we've already messed it up. You want all five people in this area here, okay? Everybody should be over here. So he charges very, uh, very little. He does not go far. If he's going to go from here all the way over here... That's a ton of DPS lost. You cannot afford that on Tyrannical. Don't let this happen. Again, the mage is out doing nothing, doing 13k. You know what I mean? Wait, now this was another mistake. I'm glad I, I, I didn't even include this on purpose. Lust, we should have waited. We should have went and pulled another pack, okay? Or just waited. At this point, we didn't even have to because it took us so long. We didn't even have to go pull the other pack. We could have just waited 20 seconds and that would have been fine. But, you know, realistically, we probably should have pulled the pack to do that. So now the mob, the boss just ran all the way over there. And that means all of these are spread out. This is not optional. You have to soak these. As a death knight, we don't have the best mobility. So you got to save your mobility. You got to be very conscientious about this. Try to do this yourself. If you can not do it yourself, you don't expect to rely on the group. You know what I'm saying? Just realize that they're probably not going to care about them as much as you will because they don't interact with them. All right. Here's indigestion. Okay. Let's take a look at this mechanic. Very dangerous mechanic, especially on, uh, especially on this week, uh, but it's because it's also grievous, right? But I guess I did actually have the week or so. There's AMS. Watch that. 82k absorb gone, and it still did 33k. Does a lot of damage. AMS is a godsend here. Use AMS, Vamp Blood, uh, Icebound, whatever you have. Uh, just try. Um, and there's the Bloodlust. Try to make sure that you're taking as little damage uh, from that as possible. Okay, so one tick spawns, not the end of the world. Necrotic, it could be bad. This time it's charging in a better direction. No, nope, it still kind of goes right at the bones, just right at the bones, so not great. But the, the mob, whatever, like the things to, you see, as you see, the, the mage is still uh, drawing the ire of the, the healer. And now this is where things go uh, pear-shaped, as Harry might say. Um, so everybody's all, like, so what, what you want to do here is you want to be spread out. This happens at 100 energy, okay? It should be very obvious when the tantrum is coming. It's going to come at varying degrees based on how much energy he has. But regardless, you want to be, uh, you want to avoid this. You see this? It's all over the room and nobody is anywhere near it, okay? And this is because people were not in the right spot. We did not have the boss in the right spot because of the charges and people were not prepared for the mechanic. So ideally, before 100 energy, people would start to spread out, especially the healer, especially any melee or ranged DPS, you would start to uh, spread out, okay? And, you know, healers, people would get a, a jump start and get over here because I'm never going to get over there, right? People would be over there ready to go for it. But as you see, those are really far away. I'm talking about really far away. And you have to continue doing it while you're tanking. As you see, multiple spawn. Now the charge happens. I almost get hit by it. Things get very dangerous, okay? 
And this is happening because I, I didn't realize it at the time, obviously. But this is happening because the mage is not contributing to actually soaking these things. He's literally not trying. And you could see that in the next. I don't mean to sit here and bash the mage. But this is what we're talking about with pugging. You're going to have this. Understand this. When you pug, you, you got to do. a If you could solo the dungeon, you should. That's how it should work. As the tank, when you're pugging, realize that very likely the damage dealers are not going to do the job that you need them to. Any mechanic like this, you have to put the lion's share of the, the problem on your shoulders. All right, and, and as you see, it's just going terribly. People are not making any effort to soak these. They're running all in the wrong directions. Let's actually take another look at this. I'm trying to find where the mage is because I, I know... So he actually got one there. Let's see. That was just the charge one first. Uh, and now here comes the tantrum. So here he goes. Uh, he's going to the right of it. I guess he is soaking a few of them. Very good. Um, but realistically, nobody is making any effort to get over on this side of the room. This is what the mage, the ranged, you know, the mage and the healer should be doing. But on the higher keys, especially on Grievous, the mage uh, is pretty much the only one who's going to be able to do this because the healer is going to have to heal. He can't not heal. You know what I mean? So depending on the class... Some healing classes are going to be more capable of doing this uh, than others. Obviously, like Resto Druid, they're going to channel Trank. They're not going to be able to move. You know what I mean? You got to think about this. Uh, it's not always just going to. It's not always going to work out that well. But as you see, AMS actually does not get fully absorbed there, so that was pretty nice. But yeah, things are already going uh, quite poorly. Obviously, uh, yeah, Mage is going to die to Grievous there. He's gotten uh, multiple aggro uh, on multiple mobs, and things are just going very poorly. So at this point, our damage is low. Uh, Lust was poorly done. Uh, these are all mistakes that you'd make when you're pugging all the time. You got to avoid that. You definitely want to make sure you have lust up for this boss. <coughs> Ideally, you'd lust for all four bosses, but that's never going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything. We don't need to keep saying this. Uh, so let's take a look at what happens here. This is actually pretty interesting. Um, so look at all of those that spawn. Obviously, people are dead. But check this out. Bone Storm. This is obviously pre-nerf Bone Storm coming out on Tuesday. But man, if this was better timed, we might have done this. And honestly, I think I make a mistake here. The boss has 5% HP, if you could see that. 5% HP. I have Dancing Rune Weapon up, and I'm sitting here just trying to survive. If I was running and attacking the boss with Dancing Rune Weapon, I might have done the 2% that was needed to not wipe here. So watch, 4%, 3%. 2.0-ish, well, under 2, 1.3, oh, wow, yeah, so I definitely, if I went at him with Dancing Rune Weapon, I might have died to the ticks, but realistically, the boss would have died, as long as I survived, as long as I did there, the boss was dead, he only had 71k HP left, that would have only been a couple, like, two death strikes, you know what I mean, so, yeah, that's that, we could have easily finished this, but we wipe, and now, you know, here, here you go. This is this is a 70k. Yeah, this is a this is what you need to see right here. So this is Spanish apparently, or something. It's not English, that's for sure. Apparently he's saying, "So are you still blaming me, or something like that? Are you are you blaming me for this? Because honestly, I I in my in stream, I'm like, all right, we just wipe because this mage is not soaking. He's not getting out. He's not he's not doing the fight properly. So I don't know what it actually says, but it, I guess it has something to do with blaming. This guy says, I guess obviously uh, we're blaming you. Yes, uh, and then now the healer starts saying it. Um, th so now the healer's reminding him that you need to be facing the wall, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but anyway, um, then he says this, um, which I, I think means even though I didn't get dispelled or something like that. I, I'm not actually sure what he's saying, but I Google translated it. didn't really make much sense. Cured, I guess that means cured. I don't know what it means. But regardless, watch what happens. I mean, this is over, right? We can shroud here. It's not the end of the world, but somebody always is going to leave. If you wipe at any point on these first two bosses, expect the group to disband. It's just going to happen. This is why I made the video I made last you know, last week now. I just don't know what to do. I mean, we still have freaking 16 minutes. You know what I mean? We can do this. It's not like we're not even halfway through the timer. And this is before the timer changed. You know what I mean? So I don't. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of levers, obviously, as you know, but that's it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the same two bosses on 15. This is a considerably higher key, but the affixes, it's not grievous. Let's put it that way. Uh, this is the push week from a while back, if you remember this. Uh, this is, yeah, a very easy week, but still, 15 under rot. We actually 
upgrade this. At the time, we didn't upgrade it, but then they increased the timer, so the count, uh, so the timer counted for it. Uh, this was actually when the weak aura wasn't working, huh? That's funny. But anyway, so you see the mage is already at least interrupted. <laughs> Step one. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's look at. All right, so there we go. Let's let's start off from over here because I, I want to see exactly how much damage each of these do. All right, so first things first. I actually have blood drinker still, which is probably not a bad thing for this boss. More single target. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and have a look. So I always open with interrupt, as you can see. I always interrupt the first one just to, so you don't be, the problem is you don't want people to be doing like four interrupts on the first one, like what just happened there. Both people just interrupted that one. Another extremely common issue with pugs. There's no voice. There's no talk about who's interrupting. I don't really know what the right choice is other than just let, like if it's me, I always just let other people interrupt. I'll be the last, I'll be the first and the absolute last to interrupt. I don't want to, I don't want everybody to use theirs all at once. So I want to mitigate that. So Sangry Feast happens, obviously. Okay, Blood Bolt. Mage is up. Mine is up, but it's not, uh, yeah, obviously not going to be up in time. Okay, so Mage is up. He does not interrupt. Let's take a look. But as you see, damage uh, considerably higher in this group. Um, so let's see. Oh, boy. Yeah, so that went to 47%. So that is what, 63% of my health. That is a lot of damage from that. So that's the difference in a 15. Did 12% more damage. Creeping Rot's avoidable. Blood Mirror already, here we go. First mob coming up. I interrupt this one, but both me and the mage interrupted. So again, wasted interrupts. Very, 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 very detrimental to this, to this run. So much extra healing is gonna be needed. Let's see if this one gets off. Let's take a look. Nope, it gets, well, it gets, inter again, a wasted interrupt. I gripped it, and the Demon Hunter interrupted, so we wasted an interrupt there. Uh, but luckily, you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. That one goes through, hits me for another 60% of my health. Uh, we got to dodge the Rot. Let's see, another Blood Boil about to go through. Another, yeah, again, that was mine. I should have gotten that one. Sanguine Feast, dodge that. Very good. Blood Bolt, I get that one. Very good. We have three interrupts up for the next one, and the NPC that got spawned is now dead. So we're going to see a, a second set of NPCs coming soon. Looks like in 14 seconds or so. Just continue to interrupt. Uh, save all your CDs. I have uh, used Bone Storm on the pole like an idiot. I don't have Bone Storm. I only have Vamp Blood. Or no, I don't even have Vamp Blood. I only have Icebound and uh, Anti-Magic Shell, which is yeah, realistically not. That's fine. That should be good. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look. So the first one uh, is, so we already got, let's see, did we already get hit by one? What did we take damage from there? Let's take a look. Blood mirror, okay. And so this is actually the one I was thinking of. They're both in between. They're both like surrounding the boss. This is perfect. This is perfect because we can grip them all on top of the boss. This is ideal. So do I get hit by the Sanguine Feast? Wow. Uh, do I? And I must because I I'm almost dead. So anyway, bad bad move there. If that's what that yeah, I got hit by the Sanguine Feast. So there we go. So we grip them all together. I, we interrupted one of the mobs with that grip too. Uh, it was the right one. It was casting it. It was interrupted with the grip. So that's ideal. But after this, uh, yeah, two go off. Luckily, one gets interrupted at the last second. Saying we feast on uh, one of the effigies. But yeah, again, we're just going to burn the boss here, it looks like. So that's good. Let's take a look. More blood boils or more blood bolts. Two coming. We have two interrupts. Do we get them? Unlikely. Nope. Neither get interrupted. Or maybe one did. I don't know. But anyway, I get hit by the creeping rot there, like I was talking about earlier in the, the session. Not good. Uh, this is just a mess of a fight. And uh, like I said, if we wipe here, it's over. Let's take a look. Boss is at 2%, 70k, just like the last boss. I'm dead. It's just the healer and the mage. The mage is currently ice blocked. The healer is running for his life. Letting dots tick. Dots are ticking as this guy is fire. Dots are continuing to tick. As you see, 13k, 11k, 10k, mage is ice blocked, he finishes him with fire blast. And we do not wipe her. Well, we do actually wipe her, which is funny, right? Watch that. We actually still wiped, but the boss died. <laughs> so that's nuts, right? So anyway, we have to get back. But here's, again, second boss. You'll see how it's handled so much better. Again, we just died on the first boss, okay? We wiped. We now have to death run. We just, we either have to wait for Shroud or Death Run, and we still upgrade this key. Stop leaving keys 10 minutes into the dungeons. Stop it. You guys are not as good as you think you are. <laughs> you don't have, we don't have to quit a dungeon just because you, it's inconvenient to skip a mob pack again. It's not that big of a deal. But as you see, we have Lust for this one. Mage and Demon Hunter doing very good damage. Uh, this is considerably dying considerably faster than the previous group. Much more prepared. Uh, and as you see there, not ideal. So that happened 
because even though everybody was in the right spot, the Demon Hunter was behind Kragma, and he still can pick the Demon Hunter to charge. So obviously not your ideal situation, but it doesn't really matter. As long as he's close enough to the wall, uh, those you know those little leeches are going to get stepped on quickly. And that is that. That guy whiffed on his comet or whatever that was, the Fire Mage ability. Okay, so we're uh, pretty well spread out. Looks like, you know, Mage and everybody's doing a good job. Healer's actually doing it. Yeah, we got every single one. Look at that. Every single one. We got every single one. That's how it should be. This is on 15, right? Although Dis Priest, you know, arguably one of the most mobile healers, maybe the most mobile healer uh, at this point. So, yeah, pretty easy for them to handle it. But regardless... Yeah, it was well done. The fact that we actually survived the damage, the fact that we actually, uh, you know, soaked every single one is very good. At this point, again, we're all spread out. People are not where they need to be, uh, but it's difficult. After the first tantrum, it's difficult to get everybody back to where you might want them for this. So you kind of just got to deal with it. So let's actually take one quick look at what the lead into this was like. Yeah, so as you see, this guy has absorbs on all four targets. Very smart. As a disc priest, obviously, this is what you want to do. Mitigates that first hit very substantially. And uh, it's a lot more comfortable for him. Now he uh, looks like maybe he's used Rapture, big shields, putting big shields on everybody. Nobody's really taking any damage. And now he's healing them up. So that's excellent. We have one tick spawn here. Actually, looks like we have two, but the rogue uh, sapped it or something, blinded it. So that's nice. But I'm going to grip it anyway. It's such an easy week. There's no reason to mess with it. It actually would cause problems. Volcanic might spawn on me now because that mob is so uh, is not in melee range of me. So, But, I mean, that's that. You're going to see a very, you know, some the Demon Hunter looks like he got hit maybe by a Volcanic or by the boss's charge. I don't know. But, you know, almost dies. But, you know, this healer is doing very good. It's a very accomplished healer. Uh, this group is very good. They're a lot more ready for this, a lot better than the previous group. And uh, we have a lot better damage. Everybody's in a better mindset. And we have a healer that's actually doing DPS. I, I, I said I don't want to call out individuals in these videos, but I mean this is what's going to happen. You know what I mean? These bosses are all about DPS. The more DPS you do, the more chance for success. Let's put it that way. You know what I mean? Like, look at the chart here. The healer did six, almost 7K DPS. We're all set, dude. You know what I mean? When the tank and the healer are doing a combined 14,000 DPS... <laughs> that's more than the mage, you know what I mean? We did more than the mage did. So we're all set. This boss is done. You know what I mean? This is what you need. And this you got to be ready for this kind of stuff in pugs. This dungeon is extremely easy on fortified. If it's fortified, do under rot. Okay? People say fortified's overpowered. Low, kill the pet. You know what I mean? Do fortified under rot. That's it. Problem solved. You can do 20s. Easy. But if it's tyrannical... The dungeon is so bad with bosses, man. This is definitely the worst dungeon for bosses. So I just want to go through this very detailed description. Hopefully this is going to help you guys. This is definitely the one. This is the, the prime example. If you're going to shroud, which pretty much everybody does, do not let anyone die. Grip mobs, stun mobs, interrupt mobs, kite mobs. Don't let deaths happen. First boss. Save all your CDs for the end. Do not overuse them. They're not going to be up. Save Anti-Magic Shell, Icebound Fortitude, Vamp Blood, and Bone Storm. Even Dancing Rune Weapon if you can afford it. Save it all because the only time you'll die, even if you don't interrupt a single time in the first half of the fight, you will never die. It's not going to do it often enough for you to die. But when there's two or three of those you know, targets hitting you with blood bolts. If they're not interrupted and you have no CDs, you will die. You're going to be taking 40 to 60% of your health and damage depending on the key. And if it's Grievous, you're going to get destroyed. Grievous is going to stack up. Even with the Grievous nerfs, it's still going to be really bad. Just overcompensate for the group's problems. This is such a difficult dungeon. And if there's any deaths, like I said, if you die on trash, you die on trash, that's it. It's over. The key is dead. If you can't release... If you have to release, you're going to have to die again. They're going to have to either wait for Shroud. They're going to have to death run. You're going to have to use a battle res. It's not ideal. You know, especially if it's the healer or you have only the healer. If you don't have, and this is often, right? Like, think about the classes that can res. It's basically just Bombkin now in the meta. You don't have any Shadow Priests. You don't have any Shamans really at all. I feel really bad about Ellie, but, you know, you just don't see Ellie at all. I wish you did. Uh, you, you definitely don't see any Feral Druids. You definitely don't see any Shadow Priests. You definitely don't see any Rep Paladins. So what else? That's it. It's just Bombkins and, and maybe the stray Ellie Shaman. You know what I mean? So if you don't have one of those, you don't see any Mistweaver or you don't see any Windwalkers either. So if you don't have any of those classes... 
and the healer dies <laughs> and you don't have battle res up, you're, you're done. You know what I mean? You're going to have to either wait for battle res or you're going to have to go shroud. You're going to have to pull off some shenanigans. Cl- clear the trash. That's it. I don't know. Very, very, very high risk skip. And it's really not worth the reward if you ask me. You could skip stuff later. You could do a whole nother video on the route in this dungeon. I really could. But it's one of these things. The meta dictates it. And you're not going to fight City Hall on this. Like, this is one thing. You know, people leaving. There's other things that could be changed about this. But people got it in their minds that you got to shroud to the first boss. And they, I think they do it, honestly, because they believe if we wipe to this first boss, then we don't waste 20, 30 minutes in here. We might as well just quit. That's literally what people think. Wipe to the first boss, just quit. That's it. We're good. Thanks for stopping by. Maybe next, be- better like next week. Me- meanwhile, the group leader's like, now I have to do this on 14 instead of 15. I don't want to do it on 14. You know what I mean? It's just such a shame, man. Such a damn shame about what's going on in Mythic Plus. But anyway, hopefully this can help you guys. This is definitely the prime example of what this series is all about. So if you guys have any suggestions or any other ones that you want to see, let me know. Uh, otherwise, good luck in Underwrite on Tyrannical Weeks. Do your best as a tank especially. Oh, one other thing. You could actually spell reflect it as a prot warrior. <laughs> Look into that. That's pretty useful uh, if you're playing prot warrior for some reason. But anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.